What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of We Run This. I'm Crystal Minotti. I'm Gina Capone. Hi, Gina. Hey. How are you? Doing okay. Uh, I got some heartburn. I know you do. Oh, it's like like poking at my chest. Did you run today? I did. I did five miles. And it didn't bother you during that? Mm, not so much. Not so much. No. Uh, or I just ignored it. Mm-hmm. Or maybe just pollen took over. You know what was bothering me today? Cicadas. I didn't hear any. I no, they were hovering over me. They were like hovering around me because I ran kind of like near a trail. Like they were loud. I have not heard them because of where I am located. I hear more, not street noise, but I hear more life noises than I do cicadas. But I ran towards the woods today and I heard them. They were loud. They sound like buzzing, right? They sound like everybody's home alarm is going off at the same time, yeah, like but like that. on a street over from you. That's what they sound like. But when I ran in this certain part, like they were kind of like hovering mm-hmm. over top of me and kind of like they're they're creepy as hell looking. Mm-hmm. But like nothing. I was just like kind of just like looking at them. They weren't going to come anywhere near me, but they were kind of like just just weird. They're just being weird. You know, and there's like so many of them. They're so loud. Is it, this is going to go on all summer? I don't even know. Like, I don't pay I, attention. I haven't seen any. So this might just be around you or maybe I'm just lucky. I don't well, know. you live more in a city ish type area with less trees. I live in a very wooded type area yeah. where there's a lot of trees. That's true. So there's a lot more of them. Um, yeah. So I did go for a run today. Did you run today? I did run today. And I went uh, for a long walk to tire out my dog and it did not work. Cause and it did not work because he's barking his, his, I walked uh, him like almost five miles and I ran and he, I'm more tired than he is probably. Got you. Um, you're going to be tired because we have two podcasts today. So you'll be yes. tired after that. I have four, oh, but you have two. <laughs> oh God. Okay. We will not complain then. Yeah. Um, so before we get into our guest today is Amanda Brooks. She is a running coach. She's a runner. She's a writer. A pro- I want to say prolific writer. She had 2000 researched articles on her website, which is freaking insane. I don't know if they're all on her website. I'm sure she's written other places, but she's done over 2000 articles. So um, the book, a book. Yeah, that is a uh, she writes probably as much as she runs, I would assume, or pretty close to it. Uh, if she could figure out how to do it at the same time, then she'd really get stuff done. But uh, before we jump into that interview, you sent me this little like screenshot of this thing. It's called Things All Runners Love, and we wanted to talk about it real quick because it's kind of funny. So uh, these are 10 things all runners love, and we want to get some feedback of everybody out there. Uh, DM us, uh, send us an email, go like our YouTube page, go do all that stuff, and then comment on this. So uh, (laughs) let's start it off. 10 things all runners love. One, carbs. Yes, very obvious. Like everybody loves carbs. Yeah, but like especially runners. Yes. Pizza, okay. pasta, pretzels. Okay. Necessity. You love um, pretzels, huh? <laughs> yeah, uh, I love pretzels. This is very accurate oversharing. Oversharing. Do you overshare? Oh my God. Yeah. All the time. Oversharing about running or just in life in general? Well, I feel like when you run with people, you like have to talk the whole time. Oh, yeah. You just like share everything. Oh, this meant in a run? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I totally I overshare. I just, in I a run. Yeah. Bit. Yeah. Now that you've said that, yes, I do that. Yeah. Uh, uh, 10 things runners love neon. I love a good neon. I have orange shorts, pink shorts, bright, the running shoes. What what are you going to do when a, that's the products they make. So you have to buy them and B you have to be somewhat reflective when you're running around (laughs) and eat and eat, but you have to be somewhat reflective, you know, like a subconscious choice. Like you don't, you don't really want to be neon, but like you kind of do. I don't know. Yeah. I'm, I'm okay with being neon. I'm fine. <laughs> this number four is our favorite, waving to strangers. Oh, God. I wave to every stranger. <laughs> All... Instead of oversharing, over waving, over, over, over greeting. I'm and then the, to everybody. the more you don't want to wave to me, the more I'm going to give you the salute. I'm just going to make it big. I'm like, yeah. Acknowledge go. me. Say yes. good morning. Look at me running. Look yeah. at me running. Um, Next one poop stories. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Love a good, love a good poop story. <laughs> uh medals i love my medals i have mine on display and then me and chris talked about this i, I would wear mine out, out yeah you would wear yours to school <laughs> mine to school in high school i did not care i i feel like i think it's uh i'm not 
that type of person. Look, I, I admit in this episode that I can't even run shirtless. Mm -hmm. So I'm not going to be the guy that wears a medal. <laughs> Too much attention. Yeah. Yeah. Which is weird for what I do because what I do is basically all attention. Yes. Very true. Very true. Weird. But different kind of attention, kind of. Yeah. Yeah, I get. Yeah, kind of. Uh, PRs. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. You want to know that you're doing well. Yeah. But I feel like this is like what I struggle with sometimes when people follow me and I'm like, do they know what if I say like chasing a PR? Like, do they know what that means? Like, what do people who don't run think of think that PR stands for? Um, I'm sure they probably look it up. Or they assume it's a running thing that they don't understand. Yeah. yeah. Like, I, just, <laughs> I know. I, I always think about that. This one is my favorite, not stretching. Oh, yeah. I feel like every run, there's very few runners that I see. I mean, like, everybody does the quick, like, you know, when we, when we go for runs for friends, we do the quick, like, you and I do the quick a little walk. Shake, a little shake, a little walky, stretchy. Yeah. I, I think about how long our walks are. It's literally from the car to the beginning of the trail. Yeah, that, yeah. That's our walk. But that's like a, even that's... afterwards, I like it's no, it's just not happening. I'll put my feet up a wall and that's really it. Uh, passing people. Yes, I do love passing people. Obviously, you love passing people in a race. Uh, did I ever tell you my legendary not passing someone story? No, but I would love to hear it. Uh, I was running a 5K. It was a 5K, I think. And we were coming up towards the finish line and the way it was like you ran down this one path and then it kind of looped around in a field and came back. Mm -hmm. Well, the end of the path ended back into a park slash playground area. There was a guy about maybe 10 steps in front of me and I was going to easily pass him. Mm -hmm. Except while I was running, his little daughter, who was probably four years old, was on the playground and she comes running up towards me, towards me. She was like, daddy, daddy, you're doing so great. I love you. And like started cheering him on. And I was like, I can't I pass this him. guy. <laughs> like his daughter's watching. No, I can't. But he's probably so mad if he ever listens listen to this because you let you let him beat you. Do you know he was in my age bracket and I think he placed above me? Yeah. So yeah. you you cheated him. I'm a softy. You know what? It was like a regular 5K. <laughs> it was like, but like in that moment, that shows you like that was the one time that I was just like, I can't I pass can't. this guy right now because I would have blown past because like, you know, for some reason I had that late adrenaline rush and I just wanted to. You, you had that kick. You had that final kick. I did. And it was one of the rare times uh, <laughs> talking about running. That's of the number course. 10. We have a podcast, of course. Yeah. We host a <laughs> podcast about running. Like, obviously we like talking about running. <laughs> so those are our 10 things. If anybody has anything they want to add to the things that runners love uh we'd exactly. love to hear it we'll, we'll do our own personal list like the we run this 20 things that runners love yeah, yeah we'll yeah. add it on uh but yeah so we talked to amanda today uh she was fun to talk to uh we got into a little bit about the mind of coaching and mm -hmm. you know it was really interesting that i found fascinating and i don't want to like you know, spoiler ruin ruin parts of the episode but that she said the majority of new people that she gets for coaching is like women 40 50 and 60 Mm -hmm. who decide like now is the time they want to run and run marathons. That's crazy to me. I mean, that's when you run in your prime. Well, like they say that forties, forties is like you're running prime. I, yeah. I could see people getting into that age and wanting to really like get better. Oh, but, yeah. But like people who just like wake up and they're 40 and they're like, I want to start running and I want to do a marathon like that kind of surprised me. So we talked about coaching. Uh, we talked about how she got into running, you know, um, some body image issues when she was a kid, not herself, but like people would say things about her body, which is always weird to me. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but we had a pretty good conversation with Amanda. She's got a ton of articles. Mm -hmm. uh, basically, we could have just read all of her articles and found out everything yeah. <laughs> about, right. about her, but that's not as much fun. But so uh, here's um, Jean and I talking to Amanda Brooks.